This is something I got asked about in the comments. How can I run a race room dedicated server and allow my friends to join? And I think I had this working in the past, so challenge accepted in a way. In this setup we're using two PCs. One to run the server and another to join the multiplayer session. I recall when looking into running a dedicated server a few years back, reading that it is either not possible nor recommended to run them on the same PC. I came across a tip in the Steam discussions about installing a loopback connection which would allow you to run both on the same PC. However it didn't work for me and if it does work and you don't have a fixed IP for your public internet connection, you would need to check that IP every time you wanted to use that connection. So just to note that concept in case someone comes across it and wants to try it out, and if it works then go ahead and use it. We can start by running through the concepts behind the setup, since the setup of the internet connection and port forwarding is key to get this working. So you have your PC running Steam and Race Room, and that PC is connected to the internet through a router. And on another PC, we're running the dedicated server app, and we've created a server session. The server may be visible from the multiplayer server list in Race Room, but if no port forwarding is in place, you will receive the no response from the server error. Now the following setup is based on how my internet connection is configured. Yours will differ, as will the type of router or modem you have, and it may be possible for you to accomplish the following using a single router, whereas in the following example, I'm going to use two separate physical routers. Regardless of how your internet connection is configured, your dedicated server will need to be accessible from the internet, as in the public IP concept we'll refer to in a moment, and you'll need to set up port forwarding for the required ports. If once you have things set up and it's still not working, I suggest you contact your internet service provider. We log in to the internet router and configure the port forwarding using the ports listed on the server page in our browser. In this case on this router it doesn't work. I've tried it before to set up Minecraft, Java and Bedrock servers running on PCs at home that would be accessible from the internet. I got it working but those servers are now running on an ASIO virtual machine. And setting up the home network in the same way should allow the race room dedicated server to work. So what we'll do in this example is connect another router and let that router handle the port forwarding. Note that when adding another router to the network in this way, it should auto configure the local IP gateway to be different from that of the main router. This is useful as it allows you to log in to the admin console of both routers while they are running, and it also prevents IP conflicts on your local network. The main router is the internet connection. In this case, it's an ISP branded router, which has been pre-configured for their ISP network with the addition of a public IP option, so we'll enable that. We will then remove the port forwarding entries. We don't really need to, but it's just simpler this way. And then place the router in bridged mode. This will mean that only one device can connect to the internet through that router, in this case our second router. And when bridged mode is enabled, features such as port forwarding are disabled so we can then only configure port forwarding on the second router. I've noticed that when using the routers in this way, it can tend to slow down the speed of the internet connection. This may be due to the fact that the second router in this example is an older model, but I'm not sure. And using the internet connection in bridged mode should not reduce the speed of the internet connection. Note how when we place the main router in bridged mode, the internet connection IP of the second router goes from one of the range of local IPs offered by the main router to a public IP address, which is what we're looking for. We'll then configure the port forwarding on the second router. If when configuring the ports, your router admin interface doesn't show you the local IP of the PC on which you plan to run the dedicated server, then search using ncpa.cpl then locate the network connection that is your internet connection, open it and select the details, and look for the IPv4 address value. 
Once the port forwarding setup is complete, our PC running race room and any PC running race room that's connected to the internet should be able to connect to the server beginning with selecting it from the list of available servers in race room multiplayer. The next thing to do is to install the race room dedicated server app from Steam. We'll quickly go through how to install it and you may have noticed that the Steam UI has changed. Click here and enable, for example, Games and Tools and Group by Collection, if you happen to have collections created. Then with Tools enabled, search using, for example, Race. If we have a collection for driving sims created, we could then add it there, just to make it easier to find. Then we can install it. It may be best to let it install in Steam's default location on the same drive where you have Windows installed. As far as I can tell, the dedicated server app uses two directories in your system. One in My Documents, My Games, Simbin, and another in App Data, Local, Sector 3 Studios AB. Just to note this, should you ever want to try and reset the data used by the server app, or back them up if you're changing your PC in some way. Now as far as I can tell, you can run the dedicated server app with or without running Steam. So if you're using another PC to host the server, log into Steam using your main Steam account and install the dedicated server app. Then go to the directory where the app is installed and run the executable. Or you could just create another Steam account to use on the PC hosting the server and launch it from Steam. And I mean create another Steam account to prevent you from being logged out of one PC when you're already logged into Steam on another. And it may be simpler to just launch it from Steam as it allows you to receive any updates the app might require. And a quick note, I tried creating a new account using the Steam client and ended up in a CAPTCHA verification endless loop. So I created the account from the Steam website instead. You may launch the server either from the desktop if you opted to include the shortcut or from Steam itself. Note that I'm not running either the dedicated server app or Steam in administrator mode. Just to note that since some discussions on how to get the server up and running refer to this method when running the apps. And also note that when running RaceRoom itself or the dedicated server app, look out for the Windows security alert prompts and which might launch in the background behind the app you're currently setting up. You need to allow this to allow the application to accept connections through the Windows firewall. So keep an eye out for these and click allow access when required. You must first select to create a new server. You must use a string of text to identify the server. In the case that you plan to run more than one server instance on the same public IP address. You will then see a prompt indicating your public IP where the server will be located. Note that this public IP would be the same result you'd get if you did a Google search using what's my IP. Give the server a name and a password as well if you need to and anyone looking to join the server would need the same password. You can then configure your server session accordingly. For the purposes of testing, we'll just use the default selection, which is some of the free content available in RaceRoom. You can then save the session settings. Once you've turned on the server, note the ports and protocols listed at the top. These are the same values we've already added in the port forwarding section of the router. To join the server, search for it by name and then click Go Race. And if all is working correctly, those looking to join should be served the loading screen and then the session setup menu. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing as well. Hate YouTubers, that's my pro tip. A comment is always welcome, along with sharing the video with anyone you think might be interested in checking it out. And if you don't mind adding to your notifications, click the bell icon in YouTube to be notified of future videos as well.
Until next time, thank you.